Eight Easter marketing ideas for your restaurant. This is episode 132 of Secret Sauce, the restaurant marketing podcast, and I'm James Ealing. Some restaurants are quiet, lose money, and the owner works 70 hours a week. Other restaurants are busy, profitable, and the owners work a few hours a day. What's the difference? They have a secret sauce. Join James from Marketing for Restaurants as he helps you come up with your recipe for restaurant success, your secret sauce. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. What did you think of Aldesco Dining? You know, it's interesting. Today's Wednesday. Yesterday, I had Indian at my desk. I was dining Aldesco. It was the Indian from Friday night. Now, the interesting thing, I think, is that the restaurant that we bought it from has probably never even heard of Aldesco Dining. They may wonder why we order so much. They're probably not tracking the fact the food that we order on a Friday night is uh, what we eat on Tuesday. And that's fairly common for us. We would do that pretty much, I would have thought, at least every second week. So a significant little revenue earner for, for that restaurant, they may not even know it. So I think a big opportunity for a lot of restaurants out there to look at how they can increase revenue and profitability with Aldesco Dining. If you're not tracking it, have a listen and uh, let us know what you think. Now, today it is the 12th of February. We are exactly eight weeks before Easter. So what I thought it would be useful, we're sitting down with our marketing team for our SEO Plus customers to be thinking about what it is that we're going to be doing for Easter. I think, you know, sort of eight weeks out, now's the time to be thinking about it, particularly for some of the interesting menu engineering type activities that we're discussing with some of our customers. I thought what we'd do is shine a little bit of a light on that process because we came up with some pretty wacky ideas that are really going to help your restaurant stand out, maybe stand out a little bit too much, but, you know, really depends on the kind of branding, the kind of business that you want to run. So eight weeks out, there's a couple of things that we want to be thinking about. First off, are you going to open? Now, what is Easter like in your neck of the woods? Is it busy? Is it quiet? Do you have walk-by traffic? Is the place deserted? Is it bustling? Are you competing with lots of other restaurants or are you out there by yourself? These are the kind of questions that are going to sort of like, is it a big opportunity for you? Or are you going to have to really sort of work hard to be able to get some decent revenue in over the days of the Easter holiday? And that is, of course, we're talking Easter. I know, I know, I know we have a lot of people that don't celebrate Easter in their country. Now, interesting, is there an opportunity, potentially less so with Easter, but I think we see it quite a bit Restaurants that are owned by Australians overseas running campaigns to their expat community. So they'll celebrate Australia Day, the perfect kind of thing that brings all of the Aussies together. And that's what they're actually buying. They're going to buy that experience. What are the holidays in your, what's your traditional home? What are those holidays? And does that create an opportunity? That's an interesting little nugget that we've seen work quite well with quite a few restaurants. So, Assuming that you have access to a significant market of people who celebrate the Easter holiday. Now, if it's going to be quiet, then it may not be much of an opportunity. You might be better off closing. So, we're eight weeks out. Now's the time to be start putting that up on Facebook. Start to put it up on your website that you're going to be closed on Easter. Now's the time to close off Easter on your online booking system on your online ordering system. Because as you get closer, you may forget about it. And it's interesting with Frilo and Forbes, we get some people who forget how to turn it off or we get people calling up and saying that they've forgotten how to turn it off on menu log. It's like, well, we're not menu log, so you'll need to call them. You want to get that done early. Let people know that you're not going to be around. Perfect opportunity for you, though, to go out and uh, take a quick holiday, you know, de-stress, get a bit of time away from the restaurant, maybe think about the restaurant, but not in the restaurant. Easter is the perfect opportunity for that, which is why I think, you know, in countries that do celebrate Easter, it's a very good touristy type activity because people in Australia get four days off for it. So it's a decent old holiday and people will often uh, go one or two days on either side of that to make a six or seven day holiday away for them. 
If you're in a tourist area, then once again, that's the big opportunity. So if you're going to close, make sure that you're signaling that early so that people know that you're not going to be open. And it is interesting because when you look at online reviews, there's quite a few reviews about people who get all excited to go to a restaurant, then they get there and it's closed. And that disappointment, it bites. Disappointed people, they're often the ones who write reviews. And it's like, wow, maybe there's been a medical emergency. Maybe for whatever reason, it's a small restaurant and someone's been sick. Uh, they can't come into work and that means that you know they're not going to be able to open and do the surface to the level of quality that they want to and then they get punished for, for closing down that night. <laughs> that's not really fair. And that's why I think it's good to get that message out early to customers. If you are going to open, good, hooray. What we want to do is to make sure that over the Easter holiday period, you're as busy as possible. You're getting each and every one of those customers who is going to be looking for somewhere to eat, for something to do. They're going to be finding your restaurant. They're going to be coming to your place. That's what we want to be focusing on. So let's start with a couple of tips that I think can work really well in the in that space. Now, the first thing is when you think Easter, there is probably a significant amount of church activity going on. Do you go to a church? Is there an opportunity there to run an activity with the church? Plus or minus charity, plus or minus giving back to the community. Is it something, are they, are parishioners looking for a place that they can go after the service, when that service may be? Is it morning, noon, night? How is it that you can uh, reach out to those people? Is it through a flyer? Is it through the committee? Is it through a joint event? Is it through Facebook? If it's a large congregation in a small town, probably a lot of those people are targetable on Facebook. Do you want to get them to come in? Is it worthwhile staying open a little bit later or opening a little bit earlier so that you can capture those people as they are coming in or out of the service? little thing to think about, which I think can make a big difference in your daily revenue. Now, the next thing to think about is kids. And there's a lot of things that you can think about here. And I think it's worthwhile working your way through the entire experience here because kids tends to be a a bit of a focus for Easter. And by that, I mean, obviously, eggs as well. So a couple of things that we can think about. Across the days, what are the opportunities there? Now, obviously, Easter Sunday, kids are going to be getting up. They're going to be getting Easter eggs. Is it worthwhile putting on an Easter egg hunt? Is that something that would draw people in? So go around before you open service, hide eggs in lots of places. Make sure that there's plenty of eggs you know, for, for all of the kids because there's nothing worse than the, the, that one kid that misses out and then starts crying. So you're going to want to have a few on hand. But would that be something that would bring people in? I think also on that Sunday, there's a big opportunity around the breakfast. So we're thinking eggs. We're obviously thinking chocolate. Is there anything that you want to put on the menu that is going to be specific for the Easter Sunday? Now, is it going to be pancakes with a chocolate sauce? Is it going to be some special egg type dishes that are going to bring back that egg motif for the family? What activities do you want to run for the kids? If you're a place that wants to encourage families to come along, wants to encourage kids to come along, then an egg and spoon race maybe. Do you want to get the kids decorating their own eggs? Is there something, you know, you could buy $10, $20 worth of arts and craft supplies and have that on hand for the kids as they come in? Obviously, then you put that up on Facebook and that really drives that, hey, we're a family-friendly restaurant. We love having fun with kids. Wouldn't your kids like to have fun here as wouldn't you be a great parent bringing your kids here? They'd have a great time. We may even have a special area where we can take them. You'll be able to see them, but you kind of may not be able to hear them. They'll enjoy themselves for half an hour and you'll have half an hour of peace and quiet without your little cherubs harassing you. Is that the way that you want to position what it is that you're going to try and do, particularly on that that Sunday morning? Or you might do that over the entire weekend. As we move to the dinner service, what is it that we want to do there? And I think it, it, it you can be very simple or you can be very complicated. It depends on the resources, skill and desire for excitement that you have in the kitchen. You could just go out and get some Easter eggs and offer them to the kids, free Easter egg with the kids on Sunday night. That's an easy thing to do, I think. You could go that little bit further. 
Easter eggs with ice cream. You know, kids are going to go wild for that. That's something that they would really love. Put a couple of photos up at that. The parents are going to see it. They're going to say, you know what? The kids will love that. Let's go and take them to here. We'll be like heroes and we'll get mummy and daddy will get a big hug at the end of the day. And so once again, what is it that you're selling? That's what I would try and sell. That feeling of being a good parent because you've taken the kids out for a dessert that is totally awesome. Not a lot of effort and imagination has gone into that from a back of house point of view. And I think that's important to think about. We could then make our own eggs. We could make eggs out of chocolate. We could make eggs out of all sorts of things. You know, far be it for me to, to come up with any ideas with that. But there, there would have to be 101 things that you could do in the kitchen that would be able to make a dessert for a child that would be very, very special. So thinking about it from the kids' point of view, the thing that they are, a lot of kids are super excited about is the Easter bunny, probably one of the most famous bunnies, not the most famous bunny though. So there's plenty of other bunnies out there. There's Peter Rabbit, created by Beatrix Potter in 1902. What could you do with Peter Rabbit? Now, Peter Rabbit, renowned for going into, was it Mr. McGregor's Garden, someone like that, I think? I'm thinking a vegetarian meal motifed around Peter Rabbit, then advertise to people who are looking for a vegan offering. So, hey, this Easter, we're not getting the Easter bunny in here. We're getting Peter Rabbit in, and he is he's helping us to create this dish, this dish, and this dish. Come and sample the wares from Mr. McGregor's Garden. It's going to be awesome. Put that message in front of vegans, they could react really, really well to that because A, it brings them back to their childhood and B, it's really working with what it is that they're passionate about, which is vegetarian food. We're going to be talking a little bit more about the the rise of vegetarian slash flexitarian slash vegan in a couple of episodes when we talk about our experiences as we cruise through Asia. And I think it's really interesting. There's quite a lot to be had with this and I think we're we're even starting to see people market vegetarian offerings to people who wouldn't normally be identified as vegetarian just because they're looking, they're vegetarian curious, I would describe them. An interesting opportunity for you to play as we come up to Easter. Thumper, Bambi's best friend, a cute little character there. What is the opportunity there? What's the marketing angle? What's the menu item that you might put there? You've got Roger Rabbit, you've got Bugs Bunny, you've got the Energizer Bunny. There's plenty of other rabbits outside of the Easter Bunny. Would you cook rabbit? Now, I personally do not like rabbit. Not a fan of it. I've had it a couple of times when I was a kid. I did not like it. Well, I've had it more than a couple of times. It was really quite sad. We would have had it a lot more if I wasn't such a stampy little kid who (laughs) really didn't like rabbit. We had it, though, because my dad loved rabbit. And why did he love it? It's because his mother cooked it for him when he was a kid. It reminded him of when he was a kid. Are there people in your area who might like to try rabbit? It's probably a bit more of a delicacy now than it was. Back in the day, my dad used to trap the rabbits, and his mum would cook them up for him. So, you know, and I think there's that whole... He was doing that as a kid. He was actually going out and performing the role of being a hunter, bringing back food for the family, which was then cooked up by his mum. And I think it's that special son, you know, starting to take on the father type role, working with his mum to put food on the table. That was why rabbit was important to my dad. I just didn't like it. I never caught a rabbit. I never seen a rabbit skinned. Not keen on anything rabbity at all. And it may be, look, hey, it may have been that my mother wasn't a good rabbit cook. Not too sure about that. But something to think about, and you could maybe try putting it on the menu. It's a little bit counterintuitive, but this Easter, come in and try our rabbit. Our rabbit in a port reduction. I don't know. I don't know how you would fancy it up a bit. But... One of those things that people are going to see that and they're going to go, wow. So the thing that I think the opportunity is with this, people who may not go out over Easter, because Easter's not a big going out and eating kind of event. 
It's not like New Year's where everyone's going to go out and party somewhere. So you need something a little bit special to get people out of their homes and to come into your restaurant. Unless, of course, you're in a tourist area when, you know, and if there's a lot of people who are going out into your area for that long weekend, that very long weekend, then, you know, your job's a little bit easier. If you're not in one of those areas, though, I think this is the kind of area that you want to be sort of playing with. Now, next thing to think about is who else is playing in this space? So, if you're an epic chocolatier, then you're good to go. So, you'll be coming up with all sorts of crazy ideas about the eggs that you are going to create because this is your thing. If you're not, if you're a bakery or a steak place, probably less so. So, is there a chocolatier nearby that you can team up with? Can you get them to create something special for you? Can you work it into the menu? How can you work it into the menu? What format is that going to take so that you can then have some Easter eggs on the menu for breakfast or lunch? You know, let's try and drive people out for a lunch. Might be a little bit quiet. It's going to be on a Sunday. Might be all right. But if not, let's see if we can put a you know a little bit of event on to get people thinking, to get people to come out and to try some of your amazing food. Same, same with the local market garden. Same, same with your local rabbit producer. If you have a local rabbit, if you have a local rabbit producer, you may not have one. So, how does that look like in a marketing campaign? Well, you know, obviously there's going to be the text of, and then there's going to be the image that you're going to run, and you're going to run it to a target audience. So, and it might be, you know, parents of families, it might be vegetarians. You could run with something like, just like Peter Rabbit went down to Mr. McGregor's garden. We went to Bob's market garden. And look at the haul that we got. And there's you with Bob and you've you've got, you know, lots of lots of carrots, lots of lettuce, lots of whatever the other things are. Let's try and come up with something a little bit more exciting than that. Some of the most exciting vegetables that he's got could be Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts are pretty epic. We're bringing them back Sunday night. We're going to cook them all up. We're going to do it this way, that way, and the other way. Come on in and enjoy our special... Easter vegan five-course menu. What is the soup? What is the special fruit-based dessert that you're going to do? Could be a sweet potato pie. That tastes pretty yummy. Could you do a chocolate flight? We've got five different chocolate eggs. This much cocoa, this much cocoa, this one uh, blended with something else. Could be eggs made out of something else. Come enjoy our flight of, you know, whatever the eggs are made out of. There's 101 things that you can do, I think, that can really spice up the marketing opportunities that you've got for this weekend. If it's a weekend that you're not going to be super busy, this is the perfect time. You've got something that you can go out to to your target market with that's really going to drive them to come in. What else is there? So, we've got chocolate. What are we going to do from a beverage point of view that we can start to drive some interest. Now, how do you come up with these ideas? Well, I literally just Googled it. So, I've Googled which spirits go with chocolate. That's what I've put into Google. Whiskey, bourbon, rum, Shiraz, stouts, tequila. So, someone's written an article with uh, chocolate pairing and alcohol. Now, it's on Google. That doesn't mean that it's completely accurate. But remember, we're eight weeks out, okay? So, tonight at the end of service... Whip up something that you're thinking of serving and get out the scotch and go, does this work? You know, like, let's try and have a bit of fun with the work. Let's have a little bit of fun in the kitchen. Make enough for everyone in the team. Hey, team, what do we think about this? Boss, that's awful. What about if we try it with Shiraz? No, that's awful. I like a stout. I reckon this will go with a stout. Oh, wow, this tastes amazing. You know, and then everyone decides. So there's a couple of things here. You're involving the team in menu selection. So someone front of house is going to be like, they're people too. They've got taste buds too. And they're not emotionally involved with what it is that you've done. A chef's going to create it. You might have your sous chef create it. And, you know, he's super passionate. He's put all of his effort in. And it might just not work. Is he going to be the one who says, ah, it doesn't work? Or does he just want to see it on the menu? The front of house guy might be like, yeah, let's run with this. You're building ownership within your team, and I think that's a little bit exciting. Everyone gets to have a little bit of fun at the end of service. If it's a smaller restaurant, if it's just you in the kitchen, hey, sit back, enjoy the chocolate mousse with some Shiraz. 
you know, enjoy some of the chocolate eggs that you bought from the supermarket with the whiskey. Does it go? What do you think? How does it taste? Is this something that you think you could put on Facebook and drive some people in? Because then what you do is I would put an Easter egg in a little egg cup and say, come on in and try our whiskey and egg, Easter egg pairing. You've got a little glass of scotch. Scotch, I think, photographs quite nicely. You've got those nice, nice colors in the liquid there. That goes quite nicely. A little bit of subdued light. The egg cup, people can see the egg cup. It kind of looks humorous, but I'm looking at it. I can taste it, and I'm thinking, yeah, that looks really cool. These guys, I'm going to come in. doesn't really matter what I'm going to have for mine. This is where you know the journey is going to end for me. This is the dessert that I'm going to have. That's the kind of feeling that we want to create in the people who, who you're targeting at. That ad, put it up, so smash it up on Facebook, smash it up into Instagram, run an ad, target people who like whiskey. This is the whiskey that we've paired it with. Now, are you an expert in whiskey? Yes, no. It could just be the whiskey that you've got up on the shelf. That's okay because people who like whiskey might go, yep, I will drink that. You've gone and picked something that's, you know, a little bit decent. So it may not be a bottle of Johnny Red. It might be something a little bit more upmarket. Then people are going to go, that would be really nice. I'd quite like to try that. So, you know, you might want to go out and get an, an Easter egg that's, you know, good chocolate. There's some pretty ordinary chocolate out there, isn't there? Let's face it. Or you might want to get someone to do something bespoke. So we've combined these two in an offering, whiskey and chocolate. If you can do that yourself, is there a a chocolate egg that you could do that has the scotch in it? Come in and try our scotch eggs. I literally just thought of that then. We've taken the finest scotch, blah, 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 and we've married it up with this uh, chocolate. It's got this percent cocoa, blah, 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 blah. Come in and try one with our cream anglaise, something, I don't know, you'll, you'll marry it up with something. Uh, take a photo of it. It's probably going to look drop dead gorgeous and then, you know, run with it. You know, the big thing I think is it's your restaurant. Know the people around you. Know the businesses around you. Know their strengths and weaknesses. Know your strengths and weaknesses and see where you can get that little pairing going. Someone who's strong in chocolate, if you're strong in... And you know what? You could get a chocolatier to come in and do scotch pairings with someone who's an expert in spirits neither your skill set you've just brought them together you're doing a meal pairing as well you've got two groups there that are mailing to their database you're emailing to yours it's probably going to be a really great night maximize the value that you can get out there they're going to get images of the night they'll be represented as experts in their area everyone's going to have a great night and then people have got that use case in their head of wow you know i should be trying some of their chocolate i've got some scotch at home i could replicate that pretty easy i'm going to buy some of their chocolate same, same with the people in the Scotch. You know what? I could go with a bottle of that. That would be really nice. So there's lots of value to be had in these little ideas. The thing is just to have the idea. And I come back to the fact, hey, team, we're eight weeks out. You've still got time to sort this stuff out, to put this thing in place. We like to plan 12 weeks out. If we're going to drop a crazy idea like this on a customer, four weeks ago is when we started talking about Easter with some of our customers. Some of them said, oh, geez, that's miles away. We're not going to worry too much about it. And other people, they're just slowly tinkering away in the kitchen to come up with some ideas. And as I've already said, it doesn't have to be chocolate eggs. It could be chocolate mousse. Easter is a chocolatey kind of time. So what is the chocolate dessert going to be? Uh, I went to a restaurant once that they had a death by chocolate. I can't remember what it was called, but all of the courses were chocolate. They had chocolate bread. I don't remember what the main courses were. There was obviously a few desserts. It was very chocolatey. There's plenty of things that you can do there around chocolate. Now, there's one bunny that we haven't talked about. I think it's an interesting one that you can get a little bit of traction with, potentially a little bit edgy, Playboy Bunny. You can get Playboy Bunny molds. Is there some sort of opportunity there to send a little bit more adult message to some people out there? You could target couples, you could pair it up with champagne, you could run maybe roses on the table or roses for the beautiful girlfriend as she comes into the restaurant, turn it into a faux Valentine's Day all the way through with your Playboy Bunny dessert that you may have, or you you could do a main. There's a lot of things that I think that you can come up with for 
Easter. These are the kind of things that we've been talking about with our customers on our SEO Plus plan. This is where we, once a month, we're talking with our customers about marketing campaigns that we can run. We're then going through executing, making sure that the website's up and running, really telling the story of the restaurant as it changes month to month, looking out for those opportunities. Obviously, you know, we've got Valentine's Day in just a couple of days. What was the planning that was done a month, two months ago? We sort of drive that by looking 90 days in advance, giving some ideas. Then we can pick and choose the ones that we think are going to be the most effective for your restaurant. Because you know what? You might have gone back all the way back to the first question and thought, no, we're going to be closed. This is not a great marketing opportunity for you. What is the next one that's coming up? And I think this is where we need to be sort of, everyone needs to be a lot more diligent in coming up, thinking about 90 days out, this is what we can do, what's front of house going to do, what's back of house going to do, how do we create that experience where there's experience, there's margin, and you're much more likely to get that, to use that experience to get in new customers they have the great experience, then they become repeat customers. And that's what we're trying to do with SEO+. Plus. So have a think about what you're going to do for Easter. By the time this comes out, hopefully there'll still be a few weeks before Easter so that you can maybe do a little bit of planning. But this is the kind of process that we do on a monthly basis looking at all sorts of events, whether it's International Pizza Day, International Beer Day, a national celebration, a local celebration. There's lots of things that you can be doing in your restaurant to drive demand. And the beautiful thing about this is sometimes they're midweek, which means that you've got the opportunity to increase your yield on those potentially quieter days, potentially quieter services. So that's about it. Have a glorious week. Hopefully it's super busy and uh, super productive and super profitable for you. And yes, we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Want more customers for your restaurant, cafe or takeout? Every month, our marketing tools and information are used by thousands of restaurant owners just like you to help them find more customers and turn them into repeat customers. All of our tools and information is designed specifically for restaurant owners. We know you don't have a lot of time to spend marketing or learning complicated procedures, so our tools are quick and easy to use. If you're looking to increase your revenue and profits, or want to work less hours, check out marketingforrestaurants.com.